Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part two of my Students and Grades series. So if you haven't watched part one yet, go watch part one and then come on back. All right, so in the last class, we got our table set up, we got our student form set up, and we've got our sub form set up. Now we're going to replace these guys here with combo boxes. So instead of seeing an ID, we can actually see information that we can use. So let's get rid of these two things. And let's start off with the student combo box first. I'm going to bring up a combo box right there. Drop it in here. I want the combo box find values from another table or query. Yep, we're getting them from our student table. We're going to bring over both of those fields. Next, sort it by student name. That's up to you. Next, that's what it's going to look like. The key column is hidden. Next, we're going to store that value in the student ID of the junction table, right? We're picking a student ID from the student table, and we're going to save it in the student ID of the junction table. Got it? Okay. Next. What label would you like? Doesn't matter. We're going to delete it anyways, and let's delete it right now. Right there. It usually comes in all squished like that. All right. We're going to put that there. And one of my pet peeves with the combo box wizard is it doesn't give you the chance to make a nice name for the combo box. So I don't want it to be called combo 64. Let's call it student combo. Can you call it student ID? Yeah, you can. This is one of those things where later on when you get into programming, if you know the field is student combo, then you know you can play with other properties that combo boxes have like columns and stuff. All right, let's do the same thing for the assignment ID. There's a lot of little, a lot of little tricks and, and reasons why I do things that I just try to get you in the habit of now because you'll thank me later on. <laughs> I don't want to explain everything right now. All right, so combo box, get the values from a table or query. Where are we getting this list from? Assignment T is correct. We're going to bring over both fields. We're going to sort by the assignment name, or if you have a date or something in here, that's fine too. Next, that's what it looks like right now. Next. We're going to store that in the assignment ID of the junction table. Next, hit finish, delete the label. We're going to slide you up into here and resize it so it fits. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to see these aren't all exactly the same size. So I'm going to click on them, right click, and go to size to grid. I know it's down below the screen here. Let me move this down so you can see it a little bit better. All right. Right click, size to grid. And that's going to snap all those guys on that grid dot lines in the back there. Okay. All right. One more thing. Since I added these guys after that was already there, let's adjust our tab order. And I'll hit auto order. Oh, and look. And see, this always reminds me too. Combo 66. See, I always forget to do it. Assignment combo. Usually when I get back to it, assignment I can't type today. Assignment combo. Usually when I like go to refer to this from somewhere else and I see it's combo 35, I'll change it at that point. Okay, so let's resize this, resize this. We did our tab order. All right, everything looks good. Save it, close it. Now we're ready to put that inside the student form. Right click, design view. Right from here, click, drag, drop. Boom, there it is. Okay, I want to delete that. Slide you over here. I'm going to make this a little taller because right now it would only show a couple of records. So we're going to do this with it and grab that, bring it down like so. This doesn't need to be quite so wide. All right, save it, close it, open up the student form, and there you go. Okay, now this relationship should be made for us. So if I come down here and add another quiz, let's add quiz two. Look at that. Jim goes in there automatically as the default value for the next record. So now when you're entering in stuff down here, you can just skip over the student. What are we missing? Test three, right? And that's alt down arrow, by the way. If you're a keyboard hound like me, alt down arrow opens up a combo box. All right, and now you can put in his grade for that. Same, okay? Now, let's do the same thing, but for the assignments. So we can see the assignment up top and then put all the grades down below for each of the students. This is nice to look up what a particular student's grades were. We can also look up a particular test or quiz, and that, that's maybe the easiest way to do the data entry, right? When the, the students all just finished the test, you open up the test form and put them all in there. So again, I'm going to copy my single F, copy, paste, and this time we'll call it the assignment form. 
and we'll do the same thing pretty much design view and I'm going to change this background color so we don't confuse it with the other one. We'll make it green. Eh, a little more greener. Let's go. A little tiny bit greener. Okay. And this guy is now going to be bound to the assignment table. Okay. And then we'll just change these fields here. So control source for this one is the assignment ID. Copy. Paste. And this is going to be the assignment name. Copy. Paste. All right. Save that. And then once again, bring in the subform, click and drag and drop. We can get rid of that little label that comes in with it. Okay, and then we'll resize this and resize this. Now here's the nice thing about the way subforms work. On the other form, it was linked by student ID, but on this one, it's linked by the assignment ID. And if you click on the subform object itself, all right, see how I got the border around it? I've selected the subform object Okay, don't click inside of it because now you're inside the form. Click off of it and then click on it just once and you'll see you got this orange border around the whole thing. It says subform up here. And now look, see where it says link master fields, link child fields? It saw that there's an assignment ID on this form. And so it made that what it's linked by. Whereas on the other one, if we save this, come back into the other form, the student form design view. If you look at this guy, Click on this and bring up the property sheet. You can either double click on that border or you can click up here on property sheet. And look at this one. This one's linked by the student ID. See, so it's smart. It knows which one you're looking at. But now look at this assignment. Okay, here's test one. Now we can put everybody in who did test one, right? Bones, got an 85, All right? Who's next? Uh, check off, got a 72, right? Uhura, got a 93, whatever. See, and I can look at the test or you can look at the student. This is the best way I found to simplify data entry for this stuff. Okay. Oh, hey, while we're at it, why don't we put an average down on the bottom right down under here, right? Copy the grade, paste it down below. I'm going to slide it under here right there. This is going to be a form footer total, but we're not going to use a total. We're going to use some. We're going to use average AVG. It's not like Excel and Excel. It's the word average. And access it's AVG. So we'll click here, we'll go to control source, and it's gonna be equals AVG grade. Here I'll zoom in so you can see it better. Just like that. AVG grade. Alright, and also change the name. I'm just gonna make the name AVG grade. Don't actually put the function up there. All right? And then we'll maybe put a label down next to it. Copy, and then I'm gonna click on this field and paste it, and then it attaches to that label. See, the label name is now that label 69. Yeah, I don't worry about changing label names unless I'm going to refer to them somewhere else. If I'm going to change their colors or something. All right, save that, close it. Now, if you open up by the one of these guys, look at that. There's the average for Jim for all of his stuff. And you can do the math and make sure it's right. And if you open up the assignments, there's the average of all the students for that particular test. That's pretty cool, huh? And if you want to, you can turn off these navigation buttons and record selectors, whatever you want to do. That's, there's all kinds of, I got lots and lots of other videos to teach you how to do all that stuff. Just like you can make a list of all of the assignments or a list of all the students, kind of like what I did with the main menu here where I have a customer list. See, you can do the same thing with your student list. And I cover this in the video for the Tech Help Free template, which I'll include a link down below. And also, if you want to learn more about form footer totals, these things we did down here, I got a whole separate video on that too. Go watch this one. One more thing for today, what we're going to do is we're going to set up something called a composite key so that this doesn't happen. If you got your student up in here and you come in here and you put in test one again and a 90, oh, wait a minute, I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't have the same test in there twice, right? So we could set up something called a composite key to make sure that doesn't happen. A composite key is basically an index on two fields in the same table. All right, and here's how you set that up. So go to the table, this guy here, the junction table, open it up in design view, go to indexes. Now there's a bunch of other indexes in here, including the primary key. Don't worry about all the stuff that's up there already. We're going to make our own. We're going to add our own composite key down here. So we're going to put in here, we're going to give it a name. We're going to call it no duplicate assignments or whatever you want to call it. And we're going to start it off with the student ID and then come down to the row below that and put in assignment ID. 
Okay, now click on this guy, and then down here where it says unique, change that to yes. That's all you gotta do. Because since this is blank, that means that this is part of this. So these two fields together make this key, right? This unique index, and it's gonna make it so that it's unique so that you can't have any record where these two things are the same. That's what this does. Save this, close it, save it, close it, and now if you open it up again, let's go back to the form this time though. Open up the student form. If I try to do that same thing again, where I put test one in a second time, it yells at you. Okay, because you got duplicate values in an index. So it'll prevent you from doing that. That's called a composite key. If you want to learn more about that, check out this video. I cover it in a lot more detail. All right, so we got most of our data entries good, but now you're saying, hey, Rick, I thought we were going to do something where I could look at it like a spreadsheet view, right? I want to see my data looking like an Excel spreadsheet, like Candace said. Yeah, okay, all right, we're going to do that next. Tomorrow. <laughs> so tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel, or you could join as a member and watch it right now. But that's all for today, folks. That's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part three. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsors. First, we have Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. You can check them out at accessexperts.com. Another shout out to Sammy Shama from Shama Consultancy. Sammy is a certified Microsoft Office specialist, and he not only offers access application development, but he also provides one-on-one -on -one tutoring services. So if you need someone to hold your hand and help you with your access project, Sammy is your guy. Check him out at shamaconsultancy.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down at the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. 
Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members, Get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a Diamond Sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a Sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.